And God used the horn of a ram to declare his word, to sound his warning. Notice the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 5. This is when Joshua and his armies are circling the city of Jericho. Remember the walls came tumbling down? This is from that story. Notice what God said. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet. Now what I'm doing in this verse is that I'm showing you that according to the Bible, the Bible refers to this ram's horn as a trumpet. This is important because what I'm going to show you next is going to be the next step in understanding a very, very special thing from the Word of God. Notice that in Numbers chapter 10 verse 2, God God instructed the Israelites to make them two trumpets of silver. Now, this is interesting because here we, in this Bible, we have two divisions. We have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. We have videos that talk about Bible numerics and I won't get into that on this broadcast. But I will say the number two is uniquely identified and corresponds to the Word of God because it's divided in two sections, Old Testament and New Testament. These two silver trumpets that God referred to in the book of Numbers are basically represent the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now let's look at why they were made of silver. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver, tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. This is exciting to me because we see that these two silver trumpets represent the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Word of God. And these words are pure and they are unchangeable and they abide forever, the Bible says. Now look at this next verse. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. This is John talking. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. The trumpet that we see Joshua blowing in Joshua chapter 6, the trumpets that they made in the book of Numbers chapter 10, the words of the Lord being uh, pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, all of these are referring to the voice of Jesus Christ himself whose voice sounds like a trumpet. And not only does his voice sound like a trumpet, but that trumpet is that ram's horn spiral that we see associated with everything else in the universe. And I hope that I've, I've made my case so far is that we're seeing a pattern that exists and corresponds to, or, or a pattern that links together the Fibonacci sequence, the spirals of everything in the universe, and the Word of God itself. Now, let me show you another image of the Word of God, and it's going to follow this exact same pattern. Take a look at it. This is deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Notice the spiral shape of it. And everything that we know about DNA is about 50 years old. Most things that we know about DNA is about 15 to 20 years old. We're just growing and, and learning more about DNA as time goes on. One of the things that they do know of DNA, even though we've never been able to see it, is its measurements. At its base, from one strand to the next, 21 angstroms wide. In one helical turn of DNA, it is 34 angstroms tall. Those two numbers are Fibonacci numbers. Now, here's what I've noticed that it matches the same pattern that's in the ram's horn, that's in the galaxy, that's in water, that's in everything that we've seen so far. It matches exactly the same pattern. And why does it do that? We're going to find that out in just a few minutes. Now, let me show you this up on the screen. This is a representation of Solomon's temple. God instructed Solomon to build a temple in his name and in his honor uh, back a thousand years before Christ. And Solomon did it. At the time, it was one of the most magnificent buildings that ever existed on the planet. And we see from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, that the temple that Solomon built is actually representative of something else. Paul said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. 
Now, what this verse is telling you is, is that in the Bible, when you see a temple, when you see a tabernacle or a temple building, it is a representation of the human body. Remember, the temple is supposed to be the place where God dwells. But an interesting verse out of the New Testament says that God does not dwell in temples made with hands. And so if he really did not dwell or live inside of the temple that Solomon built, what temple was he referring to? He was referring to the temple of the human body. I remember a long time ago, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come and live inside of my temple so that God could reign in my life and I wouldn't be in charge of my life anymore. And that's what we mean when we refer to the temple of God. It's not a building, it's the human body. The temple is also a representation of the entire universe. Now here again we're seeing a correlation between the human body, between the smallest of things and the largest of things and we see that the Bible is true when it says Christ is all and in all because back in Psalm chapter 19 we see this verse, their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world, in them referring to the heavens, hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. So the universe itself is a tabernacle where God dwells or where God exists. The human body as well is the temple of God where God wants to dwell. Now we go back to the temple and its representation of the human body. The temple that Solomon built was made out of stones. The skeletal structure, as it were, was made out of stones. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So we're seeing here that even the stones of the temple, the skeletal structure of the temple, that, that thing that held everything up, the skeletal structure, the stones of the temple themselves represent the body of believers or Christians who are making up the spiritual house of God. Now this is interesting in light of what I'm going to show you next. The fact that... This word temples is used exactly 208 times in the Bible and there just happens to be 208 bones in the human skeletal system. This is absolutely amazing because we see that the human body matches the Word of God perfectly in pattern, in order, in everything. That's because God said, let us make man in our image. Truly, David was right when he said, Said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now let's just take a few minutes and look at some of these bones and some of these bone structures that exist in the human body. You see here up on the screen, we see the, the, the rib cage, as it were. And there are 12 ribs on one side, 12 ribs on the other. By the way, men do not have one less rib than women. We all have 24. Uh, only Adam lost one, and that's how God created his wife out of that. But we see that this rib cage surrounds the most vital organs of the body. And let's deal with some of these organs and see their representation. Number one, we have the heart. That represents the throne of God. The Bible says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. We see that the heart is a representation of the throne of God. In the book of Revelation chapter 4, when John the Apostle sees the throne of God, he sees four beasts that suspended. In Ezekiel chapter 1, that is what Ezekiel saw when he saw the throne of God. He saw God sitting on that throne and he saw four cherubims, he called them, four living creatures that, that held up the, the throne of God. In the law, the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the throne of God on the earth, it was a picture of the mercy seat that existed in heaven, the very throne of God. The Ark of the Covenant was always transported by four Levite priests. And it just so happens that the human heart has that exact same number in it. It has four chambers. Let's look at the lungs. The lungs is 
Where we get our breath. That's the breath that we have. And we have two of those. Remember, the number two always points you to the Old Testament and to the New Testament. And I believe that the Spirit of God breathes inside of the Old Testament and the New Testament. In fact, the Apostle Paul said that 